In this tutorial, we'll see how sharply creased lines of our polygons can be softened by a technique called grout or smooth shading. We'll see how vertex normals change the gradient over a polygon face and find out how we can assign smooth shading to affect edges with a variety of angles. So here's a polygon object with sharp edges. This is called faceting or flat shading. Sometimes we want to be able to soften out these edges so they look smooth. This is smooth or grout shading. It can also be called smooth groups or smooth edges. And we can choose how the smooth shading occurs. For example, we can crease these edges. These three cylinders vary in their polygon counts. Here we've removed the wireframe. Smooth shading allows less divisions to give the illusion of a smooth surface, resulting in lighter meshes and faster rendering. As we've learned, face normals point in the direction the polygon is facing. However, vertex normals change the gradient shading of a polygon. If we change the direction of a vertex normal, the shading around that vertex will change, causing a gradient over the surface. At the vertex, this new shading is much the same as a flat polygon rotated in the same direction. The computer is actually faking a gradient over the polygon. Here's a plane with two quad polygons. As soon as the surface becomes uneven, we see a crease across its divide. This crease disappears when we make the edge soft. Let's make the crease hard again and find out how this happens. Here's the vertex normals of each vertex. If we bend these normals, we can see a gradient start to occur across each polygon. If we continue to bend the normals so they meet, the crease becomes invisible. This is because the shading at the edges of each polygon are exactly the same. Here's a more complicated object with vertex normals. Each polygon has its own group of vertex normals. See how the normals change when the object becomes smooth shaded. This object has much steeper angles. Smooth shading on harsh angles isn't always appealing. Sometimes a program will allow us to set the limit of the angle that's smoothed. This can be quite handy. Here we have an object with creases occurring over a range of angles. We'll start with our edge smoothing at 0 and then bump it up to 10. But we can see no difference because no angles are below 10 degrees. However, if we bump this smoothing angle up to 30, the 20 degree angle becomes smooth. Going to a smooth angle of 50, both the 40 degree and 20 degree angles are smoothed. At 70, the 60 degree angle is added. At 90, the 80 degree angle is added. Finally, at 110, all the angles have become smooth shaded. Let's have a look at this on a more three-dimensional object. Here we're affecting the amount each edge is creased. So at a smoothing angle of 10 degrees, only two shallow edges become smooth, here and here. The edges of the ramp are smoothed at 30. At 50, the 45 degree angles are added. And at 110 degrees, all the angles are smoothed, without the best results.